When we first moved into this house, I built a storage shelf system in one of the rooms in the basement. And we've used that to store a lot of our junk. <laughs> With this basement project, I built a wall that divided the central space in our basement. What I'd like to do is on the back side of that wall, have a smaller storeroom and we'll move some of these shelves that I made into that new room. And my hope is that we can compress and pare down the stuff that we have so it will fit in that new storage room. This is all the kinds of things that we use once in a while, like Christmas decorations and craft supplies and that kind of stuff. The kind of stuff that would normally go in an attic that we really don't have in this house. So way back in 2015, I think, maybe even a little bit earlier, just before we did the kitchen, I pulled the ceiling down where this new storage space will be. And I did that so that we would have access to the ceiling and we could run new plumbing in the ceiling. As we needed to update the plumbing in the house before we redid the kitchen, I pulled down the tongue and groove ceiling and I did this carefully so I could save all of these pieces as they're nice old growth fur. I built the new wall and I have an entire video about this, which I'll have a link to. So I won't show much of this at this point, but it's basically a stud wall with plywood on the family room side. And on the back side, I want to have a computer to run the TV and a place to hang the router and the modem for our internet. So now that the space is made, we wanted to put down a really quick floor just to cover up the old floor that's there in the basement. So we got some peel and stick flooring. It basically has the sticky glue on the tiles already, so you just peel the paper off and stick them down, and they're pretty easy to cut. The suggestion I would make with these is that it helps to have a really flat floor. We tried to fill in around the edges where the previous tiles had been damaged a little bit, and we didn't get that really flat. The new tiles didn't stick to that as well as they could have. <laughs> but that's where the shelves are going to go and cover up all of that anyway. So it, it really didn't matter for our setup. I did the full tiles first, and then I cut along the new wall, which went a little bit slower, but, but not too bad. Then I filled in around the end of the room, where there was a lot more cutting of pieces. And they stick down with pressure, so I used a rolling pin to kind of slide around on the tile and help push the, the tile down to the floor. And now for an announcement. I am excited to be live on the Maker's Mob, and my first tutorial, wood turning a bowl from a freshly cut tree, is live and ready to be viewed. And because it's the annual Black Friday Cyber Monday sale, you can get access to the Maker's Mob at almost zero cost. For only 99 cents, you can get a full month all access pass to the Maker's Mob. The Maker's Mob is a video site where you can watch woodworking tutorials from many of the top YouTube makers like Jimmy DeResta, The Samurai Carpenter, Liam Hoffman, Neil Paskin, and John Peters, who all have projects on the Maker's Mob, with new projects being released every Friday. Click on the link below in the description, and I will see you on the inside. Now that the floor is in, I can start working on the back side of the wall. Originally, I had planned to use the structure of the wall to hold the shelves up, and I thought I would be cutting notches into the shelves to make them fit into the wall. But in thinking about this, it, it was just way too finicky and not worth the time to do all of that measuring and cutting. So the room that the shelves used to be in has this lovely wood paneling that we were thinking we'd just paint 
but I decided I wanted to get at the wiring in the walls and it would really be helpful if I removed the paneling. So I decided I could remove the paneling from the old storage room and move it into the new storage room and use it on the back side of the new wall. And the old storage room will become our new craft room and sort of work room in the house. And I can put up new wall paneling for that at some future date. I realized too, once I had the wiring in, I really wanted to cover the wires up. So that was some of the reasoning for putting the paneling up. The first two panels were straightforward as there were no cutouts in them. But the third panel was where everything was gonna be cut into that panel. I had three electrical outlets, the venting near the floor, the venting behind the TV, and I wanted to make cutouts for the data cables that would come down from the ceiling and connect to the new location of the router and modem. So I did a careful drawing of that panel and where I wanted all of the cutouts, and I cut everything on the CNC machine. And I managed to get everything in the right place. With the CNC, you can be perfectly precise in the wrong way. <laughs> I wanted to make a temporary shelf for the router and modem as I can turn the power off in the house without bothering anyone too much, but turning the internet off for even a few seconds, everyone starts to yell at me. So, <laughs> so I needed to move the router and modem and quickly reconnect everything. So I made a little shelf that it sort of works like a French cleat. It'll have a little lip that hangs over the edge of the wall panel and will hold itself in place. And I made the lip that holds the edge of the wall panel a little bit big. So I made some adjustment screws that let me adjust how level the shelf is. So I can put the router and modem on that shelf and then wire them in place. Now it's time for the ceiling, and I can use my panel lift again. I've got an entire video about building this too, which I'll put a link to. And I've learned with this lift, it isn't so much that it's helpful in that it lifts the panel up to the ceiling, it's that it holds the panel against the ceiling while you attach it to the ceiling. That's what makes it really useful. So I can get it up to the ceiling and then, then move it around and get it exactly where I want it. Now you may see me making a gigantic mistake right here, <laughs> which I will talk about in a few minutes. But see if you can figure out what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> At least one of many things. I put a smaller strip against the outer wall and I kind of figured that's the area where a lot of the plumbing and wiring runs. So if I ever need to get at any of that, I can take that smaller panel down. I got some strip lights that don't need a fixture. You just put the tube up and you can hold that in place and then you just wire directly to the tube. And I wired up an outlet to a switch. So I can just plug these into that outlet, then they can be switched at the door just like a regular light. And I had to keep the wire out of the door swing. Now it's time to bring in the shelves. It worked out where the shelves are 22 inches wide and with one on each side, I get a 22 inch space in between the shelves. So it's 22, 22, and 22. And I thought it would be kind of tight, but it actually works okay. I think it will be fine for a storage room. So the first shelf will be upside down. That way I can get at the sides to put the screws in to the supports. And I needed to cut the vertical supports down a little bit so they would fit in this room. And I made a set of spacers that will go between the shelves that will hold them in place while I screw the shelves into place. So they work a little bit like the panel lift in that they hold the shelf where they need to be to be attached. So I attached the shelves to the wall on the back of the shelves. 
then I could pull my supports out and attach the front of the shelves. So on the shelves that run along the new wall, there's only the support 2x4s on the front. It all went together pretty quickly once I had the kinks of the system worked out. And now you can find out what I screwed up. <laughs> well, I'm going along putting the shelves up and I realized I didn't cut the air return hole in the ceiling. Luckily, I used screws on almost everything and I could take all of this apart. So I needed to take the two lights that were on that section of plywood down and I could take the plywood panel down. Then I measured where the hole for the intake for the furnace was and cut that out of the plywood panel. Now there's a cover for this, so I don't have to be really neat with this hole. It just has to be pretty close. And I can put everything back up again. <laughs> and luckily my hole was in the right place. And the panel lift really helps with getting the panel around the router and the modem and the shelf and all the stuff on the wall. And I can put it all back up. And here's the cover going on. So the, the holes in the vents in the wall aren't super important, but the, the hole in the ceiling is really important. <laughs> this whole room in the basement wouldn't have an air return to the furnace. So I put up the first two bays of the shelves, and they're both four feet wide. And the third bay I measured and figured out that I needed three foot shelves because four foot shelves would be in the way of the door swing. So I had to cut a foot off of these shelves. I tried it first by cutting them along the fence, the table saw, and that felt just too sketchy. So I got my big sliding panel cutting jig out and I cut them with that and that, that worked really well. I'd also thought initially I would cut a foot out of the shelf and then re-splice the two sides of the shelf back together again with biscuits. But in thinking about that, it seemed like more work than it needed to be. <laughs> so I just cut a foot off of the shelf and made a new end piece. And that was a lot simpler. Once I got to this point, it was just a matter of putting the piece in. And I had three foot shelves. And on these, I only did half the number of shelves. As we needed more space for the computer, and it would give us a tall shelf on the bottom for tall things. And this gives the computer air to cool and just space for the height of the box. I hung the surge suppressor along the side just to try and keep it somewhat neat. <laughs> and you can see how the wires can go through the wall at this spot too. Because we have many, many things on the other side of the wall that run off of things on this side of the wall. <laughs> I had gotten some requests to do a video of the computer build, and I actually didn't film any of that. So I really don't have a video for building the computer. No, I didn't. The shelves on the other side were going to be straightforward, but the very first shelf, I needed to cut the corner of the shelf off as the shape of the basement wall has a, a six inch diagonal corner that's in the way of the shelves. Once I had the corner cut off, I made a piece to fit into that shape. So I cut a strip with 45 degree angles on each side. Then I cut that strip into segments. And I could use each one of those segments on the shelf. And it was just a matter of gluing it in place and putting it in with some nails. So once that first shelf went in, then it went fairly quickly. Now we need to get more of the stuff out of the original storage room so I can take apart more of those shelves to get them over into this storage room. So this isn't quite complete at this point, but we've started to move some of the stuff over onto these shelves. And the space between the shelves is tight, but it works. And the computer seems to be happy where it is too.
Thanks for watching.